There's lots of different formats and ways of presenting your portfolio, but if you're going into digital product design, I would say an absolute must is to have a portfolio website that shows some of your work, has a method of people contacting you or finding you online and whatever related social networks that you want to link people to, and also, again, tell a little bit about your story and your background. So what I've put together is a mock portfolio, which is one way to present a portfolio. And I'll take you through a couple of the different pages that you might want to include on your website, and also how you might structure a case study for a particular project. So in Figma, what I've put together here is a example of what the homepage may look like on desktop and how it might look in mobile. So what I've done here is I've got this header graphic. It clearly states what my name is. My name's Thomas, but I want to be a little bit more conversational. So um, I'm sort of introducing myself as Tom and that I'm a product designer and where I'm located. And then sort of my, my subline of that just explains a little bit more about where my experience comes from and how long I've been working in the industry and the things that I'm passionate about. And it also gives them a little idea of what some of my interests and hobbies are. And then of course below it I've got a, a call to action which will take you to the about page if, if someone wants to learn a little bit more. And then the main thing that you want to include right on your homepage is probably some links to your case studies. Now how many you include is really up to you but if you're going to go into an in-depth case study format um, my recommendation would be uh, a minimum of two or three but definitely no more than five. So on the about page, I've tried to build off of what I established on the home page, but I've gone into a little bit more detail, just having a couple of quick paragraphs that say where I've worked or where I'm working now or what I'm passionate about, anything that you really want to come through. And then if you want to, you could also include a photo of yourself so that people know who they're they're talking to. It gives them um, a face to the name. And then below, I've also just highlighted a couple of things that... Um, are not necessarily design projects, but they're, it shows my involvement in the design community. So opportunities I've had to speak, and then opportunities that I've had to write about um, topics relating to design. So now we're looking at what an example case study might look like. So in this particular case, um, I am dealing with an app project uh, for a mobile app that is fairly heavily research focused. So a lot of the, the data that it needs to present is either um, written data or it's diagrams or it's, it's numeric data, which you will want to come up with some sort of interesting visuals to sort of communicate that to break up just the monotony of having a, a page that's, that's completely text. So what I've done is I've started at the top just introducing the project and sort of at the top of your page, as much as I sort of want you to focus on telling a story and not being so focused on the end result polished visuals, this is actually a great place to just put a little snippet of, of what those end result visuals look like just to capture the person's interest and then you can sort of take them back to that point by the time you sort of get to the end of the case study. So in this project I've sort of structured it with the problem and then highlighted some of the research that I've done. And to make the research a little bit easier to consume, um, I've also put together a couple of diagrams that help sort of illustrate some of the problems um, that um, I wanted to solve with the app. And then as we move down through here, I sort of talk about some, some key findings. And what I found in this particular project was, um, as I was doing the research and as I was interviewing users, I actually found some really interesting uh, facts that really helped change the direction of the app. So instead of creating this app that was designed to help people find routes that were going to be quicker for some to get from point A to point B, I actually found that there was actually a, an opportunity to differentiate the app by focusing on routes that were not only fast, but they were routes that were stress-free. So it sort of changed the focus of the app and that really drove how I approached the app and, and what some of the visuals were. So as I go through the research and some of my explorations, um, I'm including some of the sketches that I did um, in this particular case. I put together some paper prototyping and that was one of the ways that I got like really quick insights into whether I was on the right track or wasn't on the right track. So that would be something that you may want to include. Even if it's not super polished, it could just be a scan or a, a photograph of, of, of some of the, the work from your sketchbook. As I went through that research phase, it became really clear, um, you know, for a minimum viable product, what are the core features that this app needed to have? And so I sort of highlighted all of those three things. And rather than trying to design for every single feature that could possibly be in an app like this, I really focused on the things that if the app didn't include anything else but only these three things, what would they be? So in this particular project, because I have a background in graphic design and I really wanted to convey 
sort of this sense of, of calmness and playfulness. I thought that the visual design and the visuals within the app um, needed to be really strong. And so I, I also included a little section here where I talk about sort of how the, the name of the app and how the visuals came together and sort of like what they were designed to convey. And then as you sort of get to the end of the case study, um, I've included a few example screens that were designed uh, from within the app so someone can get a sense of, of, of what that visual design was. When you're pulling all the content together for your case study, there's no need to show every single screen of your app or every single detail about the research and process that you went through. There's gonna be more opportunities to elaborate on that. So for example, if you're, if you're using this portfolio to, to land a job interview, when you go into that interview, you're gonna have an opportunity to present your work again. And what you don't wanna do is go in there and launch your website and just walk through the same content that they've already seen. So being able to sort of put together a presentation down the road that like maybe goes into a little bit more details and shows them some of the things that you didn't put in your website is a really great way to show them enough but not give the whole project away. So don't be afraid to be selective with the screenshots that you do include. You will have opportunities later to show more of that detail in an interview. So when you're selecting which projects that you want to show in your portfolio, try to think about the type of work that you want to do, the type of work that you're strong at doing, and if there's one project that you know doesn't really have an interesting story behind it, maybe pick the one that um, surprised you a little bit more along the way in terms of something that you learned or something that maybe went in a totally different direction than you expected it to. Those are always the, the types of projects that you'll have the most takeaways and you'll have a lot more um, interesting things to talk about in an interview setting when, when you go to talk about that project again. So I picked this particular project because not only does it do a good job of showcasing my skills as a visual designer, it put me outside my comfort zone doing a lot of research, which is an area of design that I don't have as much experience as, as some of my other skill sets. And I wanted to give myself a project that was going to give me the ability to do a lot more user research and a lot more user interviews and just let that design process guide the final direction of the app. And so this case study tries to tell a little bit of that story and show that data in an interesting way and show how the insights from that data really helped shape the final project. One thing to consider when selecting projects for a portfolio, especially work that you plan to share publicly on your portfolio website, is ensuring that the work is not protected by any NDAs. If you do have a project that is protected under an NDA, Try to figure out what capacity it is protected in terms of sharing it with somebody else. Some companies may allow you to share it if you take off any brand names or, or, or any form of corporate branding off of the project, and other companies may not allow you to show that work at all. So try to keep that in mind when you are putting the portfolio website together. One way around this, if you do have a lot of projects that maybe can be shared but not publicly shared, is to explore the option of having a password protected website. So if you're dealing with a recruiter or a hiring manager, you could share the password and only people that had that password would be able to access the work. So what happens if you don't have that perfect portfolio piece? Well, this is an opportunity for you to conceptualize something that demonstrates the type of work that you want to do. You could make up a totally fake project. But if you do do that, try to approach it in a way that's real world. Give yourself real world constraints, do real research, and make it as real as the project could possibly be. So in the particular example that I shared, it's a completely fabricated app, but I grounded it in real research, in real data, in real interviews, as if I was designing a real app. And even though it may not be a real thing that was ever produced, it still shows your attention to detail and the way you approach solving a problem. Another thing you could also do is try to redesign the aspect of an existing app. But I'll caution by saying a lot of the app redesigns that people have done um, sometimes explore these redesigns at a very superficial level. And so if there is something that you would like to redesign, try to find something that is a product that you use that maybe you've struggled with a certain part of it that you think could be better and really go into depth about maybe how you fix that one feature or how you would reapproach that. And that little part of a project can be an interesting case study itself without having to redesign an entire app. And the example that I showed, I really focused my efforts on designing the functions that I would need within an app to create a minimum viable product that just shows one flow from a user selecting a destination and figuring out how that person's going to get to the destination. There's probably all sorts of other add-on features that would be really useful in an app like that, but for the purposes of demonstrating um, a proof of concept, it wasn't really necessary to go into that level of detail. 
And if you're strapped for ideas on coming up with a conceptual project that has some real world constraints, you can check out a website called briefbox.me. And if you sign up, you have access to something like over 150 different briefs, which will be example projects that, that you could take on and treat like real world projects. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to like and subscribe to stay up to date on all of our latest videos.